Praise God, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Well, it's my pleasure and honor to be honoring and uh, celebrating our 2019 graduates. And uh, be- before we do that, we're going to hear the word this morning. Is that okay? Yeah, we're at, we're at church. We're supposed to be hearing God's word. And uh, so I talked to Pastor, and I decided to ask uh, Zach Schmidt to uh, tag team with me this morning. He's one of our sons here and on our youth team. And um, now, uh, here's a little secret. This is his first time up here preaching. So smile really big and pay attention. Let him know he's doing a good job. And uh, Zach, come on up, man. And let's give him a good hand this morning. morning. <laughs> so a week, two weeks ago, Pastor Steve asked if I would share today. And I said, yeah, of course. Um, so of course, followed by that is a lot of prayer and figuring out what God wants to talk about. And uh, it's funny how it all came together, but um, I feel that God wants to talk today about identity, um, the graduates about identity, and, and everybody about identity, um, and your identity in Christ. Uh, so let's pray first here. Father, thank you for, for this morning, Lord. Thank you that you've brought us all together. and Lord, I thank you for the words that you've given me, Lord, that that you will that you that I am an empty vessel, Lord. That I may f- that you may fill me and I may flow over to each and every one of these these congregation members, Lord, and, and these graduates, and that every person may leave with uh, with a part of what you what have you what you have given me today, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. So I want to start out with uh, a question, and that's who are you and what makes you? And, you know, is it your height, your weight, your name, your parents, your experiences? Um, your mistakes, your success, where you live, what you do, who you know. Um, you know, these, these things are all temporary. They only, um, these things all go away. They're only temporary. You know, at the end of the day, does it, do they really matter? You know, when you're standing up uh, in front of God at the, at the pearly gates, it um, doesn't matter who you know. Um, in John 1.12, it says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Yeah. You know, Webster defines identity as the distinguishing character or personality of an individual. So, so if your identity is... Um, where's it at here? Sorry. So if your identity is found in Christ then your character and your personality should also reflect Christ, right? Um, in Ephesians 6, 10, and 11, um, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. It's, it's funny how this came about. Um, I don't know, Tuesday I think it was. I was at my cousin's baseball game, and uh, he's actually the the catcher, so he's got, you know, the full armor, you know, on, and uh, God reminded me of this verse, and instantly he said, you know, if every morning when you wake up, you're putting on the full armor of God, you know, how do you, how do you have any question as to who your identity is found in, because you're wearing it every day. Um, I would break identity down into three main pieces, an identity itself, calling, and assignment. Um, your identity is who God says I am. The calling is what God has purposed for us. Your assignment is the works you have been called to do. Um, so do not allow your assignment to change your identity. However, allow your identity to dictate how you are pursuing your calling and who you are and how you are working on your assignments. And then if you could turn to uh, 1 Peter 2, 9, and I'm going to read 9 through 12. says, I have it on the screen as well there, um, it says, for you are a chosen people, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession, 
As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he had called you out of the darkness and into the wonderful light. Verse 10 says, Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you had no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. And then verse 11, this this really struck me, um, says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from the worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if you accuse, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. You know, growing up um, in high school and being a a Christian all my life, I uh, made the decision early on to follow God, you know, to not swear, to not drink, you know, to not not uh, you know do drugs or anything, and a lot of my so-called friends in high school, um, they didn't you know they obviously didn't understand that. They, every day they'd ask, "Why don't you ever swear? Why don't you ever drink? Why don't you ever come to these parties?" And I always said, you know, it's, it's just not who I am. It's not who I strive to be. Um, you know, at, at the end of my life, it's not going to matter. I'm not going to live every day for the high. Um, it, it's funny because. You know, it says in that verse, um, do not, er, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires and wage war against your very soul. And that's exactly what those things are doing is they're waging war against your soul. Um, they're, they're pulling you further away from God. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, in the long run, I feel that by making the decision to, uh, to stay strong, and it made all my friends, you know, know that, that I wasn't going to waver in any way. And, you know, by that time, they've decided, you know, that, that I'm a good person to come talk to when, when they're having issues or when they don't know what to do what the next part of their life is. Um, and then in wrapping up here uh, uh, to the graduates, um, I urge you to take this next chapter of your life and make it a stepping stone to knowing and showing that your identity is in Christ. Wake up in the morning, put on the full armor of God, and thank God that you are not identified by your past mistakes you have made, by the past mistakes you have made, and not identified by who you think you are, um, or who you think you need to act like. God has made you a masterpiece. Don't walk around with a mask on. Hey, he did good. He did good. Awesome. Wonderful. We've got a lot of preachers in this church, I bet. Amen. Well, I get to, to uh, fill in the other half. I didn't know, I didn't know what he was going to say, I mean, but it was, it was good. You know, one of the things that really hit me hard today was that third song, uh, Amazing Grace, and talking about Jesus smiling down off the cross. Wow. Wow. Can you just imagine the love that he must have had for you and me to go that far? To love you so much. Wow. So today I want to talk a little bit about God is present. God is present in your life. And uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 46, verse 1 says, Our God is a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. He's ever-present. And you wonder, how is it that God is ever-present? Well, I'm going to tell you a few things about God and His divine attributes. The first one I want to talk about is self-existence. And God has life within Himself and needs no other to stay alive. He always has been. He always will be. The next one is immutability. God has no variables, no shadow of turning, and He never changes. So, who he is is who he is, and what he says he will do, he will do, and um, that's awesome. That's an awesome thing to know about God. The third thing is omnipresent. The Lord is everywhere at once. Wow. You can't say that about some wooden idol or some other thing that people like to serve or some dead God that, doesn't, that somebody made up, you know? God is everywhere at once. The next one is omniscience. 
God is all-knowing. He knows everything that was, is, and ever will be. He knows everything about you. He knows what's, what's going on in your private life. He knows what's going on in your public life. He knows what's going to happen to you tomorrow. He's all-knowing. He's omnipotent. The Lord is all-powerful and has power over everything and everyone, except for the human will. <laughs> and He has sovereignty. The Lord has the final word on everything but the human will. Man, God is awesome, and He is present all the time. And I think it's important for us to remember that. I remember as a young adult, you know, coming out of high school, um, it's pretty easy to forget. It's pretty easy to forget that God's there with you every minute, through every trial, through every situation in life. Amen? Uh, Solomon talks about God's divine attributes in uh, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 4. It says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my laying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Wow. God knows you in every bit, even if you're wretched in your soul, even if your body, your mind is full of lust. He knows you, and he loves you so much. He knows you, and he loves you so much. Isn't that awesome? We serve an awesome God. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. So why am I talking about this today? Why am I talking about how God is present? Let me tell you. I want to talk a little bit about perseverance. Now, perseverance isn't necessarily a quality, but it's like the, uh, the uh, resolve and action. And the Webster's Dictionary definition talks about how perseverance is a steady persistence in a course of action, a, a purpose, a state, etc., especially in spite of difficulties, obstacles, and discouragement. Anybody got some of those things going on in their life? We don't talk about that stuff too much, do we? You know, it's all good. I'm doing good. I'm fine. God's good. Amen. And, uh, but, you know, we deal with things in our, in our private life, in our souls. Now, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, you know, this pretty much sums up what it took to get through high school, right? A, a steady course of action, a purpose, a state. And it's, it's, no small, it's no small feat to graduate high school, right? Now, uh, Cole, Cole Emery back there, he tells me it was a breeze. I don't believe it, man. <laughs> I don't believe it. I, it was not easy for me, I tell you what. But uh, praise God, that happened 20 years ago, and it's over now. <laughs> so that was, part of, uh, that was the first part of the definition of perseverance. And um, let's talk about the second part. It's the theological definition. It says, a continuance in a state of grace to the end, leading to eternal salvation. I love that, how it talks about this grace of God. Webster's Dictionary just said, perseverance is directly influenced by the grace of God. That if you have God's grace actively working in your life, that you have perseverance to make it to the end, even to eternal life and salvation. That's incredible that this all-present God, all-knowing God, made a way for you through Jesus Christ by His grace that doesn't change in color one bit by how much you sin or, or anything else that you do or think. His grace is there, sufficient for you, so you can have perse per perseverance in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, you know, a lot of high school graduates, they're, they're like kind of in la-la land right now. I'm done. I finished. It's over. You know, they, everything's probably roses right now. There may be a few things looming on the near future. Oh, I got college coming. I got to find a summer job. You know, maybe there's some other things going on in your life. I, I pray. I pray all as well. But not everything in life is roses. Amen? We like to, we like to pretend it is sometimes. You know, we come in and put our church face on, but... 
It's not all roses. And I saw an illustration of, of life in the form of an iceberg. Everybody knows that iceberg, most of the iceberg is below the waterline, right? Now, the, the top, above the waterline is, is everything that we see in public. You know, it's like the Nike commercial, just do it, you know, work hard, play hard, success. Right? Put on your stretchy pants and run and you're good. That's what people see and everything's good. But below the waterline, we know there's a whole lot of stuff going on. A lot, of, a lot of pain sometimes, you know, um, relationships gone bad, people that hurt you or maybe you hurt people, um, tears, laying awake at night, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, having to work out our, our salvation with fear and trembling, right? And you, can I get a witness somewhere? And uh, so life is tough, life is tough. And I remember as a, y- a younger man um, coming out of high school, how hard things were sometimes and how lonely I felt and how discouraged I was at moments because it just didn't seem to be working out, God. It didn't seem to be going the way I planned, God. Hmm. But you know, Jesus did something really special for us. He sent to us the Holy Spirit to be our guide, to be our comforter, to be our helper. He did. He sent us the Holy Spirit. And if you have received Jesus Christ, then you have received the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and he is with you all the time. You know, we read about the ever-present help uh, in in Deuteronomy. I don't know if I, did I skip that verse? Deuteronomy 31.8. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. (laughs) He was ever present then, but now we have the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of us. We don't have to go through the high priest. We have Jesus, the high priest of our salvation. Amen? Amen. So I've made my share of idiot moves in life. I've rated pretty, pretty low on the integrity scale at moments. I've had to deal with the wretchedness of being a human. But in the midst of that, in the midst of that, the Holy Spirit was there. And all I had to do was listen. All I had to do was open my ears, and he would lead me and point me and turn me to Jesus Christ over and over and over again. So here's the challenge today, is that no matter what's going on, remember that God is present. He's with you, and he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's not going to turn away because you have some humanity happening in your life. That's not permission to sin, but he knows you. He knows everything about you, no matter what. And he loves you, and his grace doesn't fail. And because of the Holy Spirit working in your life, who's going to help you turn to Jesus over and over again, help refine you, and help you become the young man and woman of God you're supposed to be, you can, you will persevere. You will make it to the end. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep listening to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. America's favorite pastime is channel surfing. (laughs) It's easy to channel surf, but if you can tune into the the voice of God, if you can tune into His voice and hear from Him clearly, even if it's just a couple of words, hey, son, stop doing that. (laughs) Hey, honey, I love you. I'm going to heal you now. It's no small feat to stay tuned into the voice of God. There's so many voices in this world. You know, sometimes we shut down God because we're ashamed. Because we have fear. Because we're preoccupied with something else that our flesh wants. But it's time to to turn back to God in that moment. Amen? To keep listening to His voice. Close your eyes with me. I just wanted to read something to you, and then I'll close.
Despite your humanity and your feelings and your heartache, keep listening to him. He will gently lead you towards Jesus, towards redemption. It's hard to talk about the struggles I face in my private life, the people I may hurt or were hurt by, the damage I cause to myself or others, the guilt and shame the enemy beat me with for many years. The encouragement comes when we see God at work, untangling confused thoughts, healing wounds and restoring relationships. He is at work. I know He's working. But when you're in the middle of it, you just have to wait and trust Him. Romans 8.28 says, For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. I still have problems, but I know that all my problems are solvable as I look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. By keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are able to persevere as we run the race of life with patience. Don't give up. How merciful God is to continually teach us His ways in the middle of this world when we called life. Amen. Amen. Well, I had one more verse, but I think I'm going to skip it and uh, move on to the next thing. I do want to pray today for anyone here who um, feels like they need to turn their life back over to God. Amen. 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 So just bow your heads one more time. <laughs> and uh, just look inside, and you know, you know your life. You know if there's unrepentant sin, if you have things that you need to get right with the Father. You need to get Jesus' blood over. And just now, I want you just to say to the Father, God, I did that. I, I did that thing. Just own up to it. And then just say, I receive your love today. I repent. Thank you for your forgiveness. And if you don't know Jesus today, just now invite him into your life. Say, Jesus, come live in my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life today. I choose you. I want to be a Christian. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands this morning. Amen. Whew. All right, we're right on time, right on schedule this morning. The next course of action we're going to play our uh, graduates' video. We asked for pictures from all our graduates, and so you'll get to see their shining faces up there. So go ahead and roll that video. clap our hands for our graduates this morning.
So we're going to be honoring our 2019 high school graduates and as well as college graduates. We have two college graduates with us today, and I believe they're, they're here. I don't know. I haven't looked around too much. So I'd like to invite all of our graduates up at this time. So come on up. Come up and face the congregation. Sarah, you can bring your baby if you want to. <laughs> She's like, I do. Awesome. Got to come up here and turn around so everybody can look at you for a minute. Now, we actually have like 14 or 15 graduates. Not everybody could make it this morning. There's some graduation graduations happening, and a few people were out of town on some other assignments. But um, thanks so much for coming out, guys. So now, you, now you've had a look at them. Turn around and look at me for a minute. <laughs> we are so proud of you. Yes. I say we, I mean our whole church. And I am proud of you, and uh, we're so glad you came out this morning so we could honor you and celebrate each one of you and this great accomplishment in completing high school and and college, and uh, man, it's so awesome to see you here and to see you grown so much and uh, to have persevered like you have, have persevered like you have and become young men and women of God. And uh, I'm excited to see the future that God has for each of you. I know it's bright. I know it's going to be huge. And all you got to do is just hang on and trust Him the whole way. It's true. And uh, so congratulations. Congratulations. And I want to invite Pastor Rick up, and he's going to be um, giving you a gift and laying hands on you this morning, anointing you with oil and for whatever's next, whether, whether it's more education or, or marriage or, uh, you know, being a mom and all these things that you're doing. So praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, God has a plan for you. I wrote this in your card. That my prayer for you is that the journey that you take in life intersects with the destiny that he has for you. And that is the big deal when those things intersect. And this is the, uh, I think I also wrote in there, you know what, the future is yours now. Go for it. And uh, be all that you can be for the Lord. Never forget all the things that you've learned about God in your life. There's going to be some brand new freedoms now. Uh, for some of you already in college, you've already experienced those, but for others, it's a brand new day. Never forget the foundation that you have. God is always going to do great things in your life, and never forget He has a calling for you, and He has a plan for you, and we here at Resurrection Life Church, your church, we love you, and we'll always be here to back you up and to be, be here for you at any time. Amen? So let me, you got the cards in order to hand out? Uh, I can give them to you. Again. That's all right. Just give me whichever one you want. Caleb, looking good, man. I'm, I'm kind of impressed with these right here, dude. Wow. Well, I remember when you were like, now you got cannons. Where are you at, Abby? There you go. Congratulations, darling. No, you don't have cannons. And you're getting married like soon or something? Yeah. September. All right. Chadlin, you're awesome. God, congratulations to you. And, and so great to see you up there on the praise team and uh, worshiping the Lord. Amen. Jackson, I bless you, man. Good things coming for you. Amen. And then this young lady, she just had her open house yesterday. Emily, I love you, darling. God bless you. And Sarah, how you doing, hon? You been hearing from your husband over there? And uh, where's he at right now? Georgia. Georgia. Is he done with boot camp yet? No. Not yet. He's doing post-secondary. Not really boot camp. All right. Well, God bless you, darling. I know that uh, it's been tough to have him away. You'll be happy to have him back, right? Awesome. Congratulations on graduating. And so I speak life over you. I speak health over you. I pray that you, you, you know, you, as you put one step, one foot in front of the other, may you know that God's going to help you take those steps and do all that he's called you to do. Never forget that you have a calling upon your life. Father, I thank you. I speak now over these graduates, health and life and grace and peace, and may they never forget that you're always there with them in the name of Jesus. Amen 
And amen. Give them another big hand. Come around, Russ. Go sit down now. <laughs> hey, this is a busy time of year. I'm glad they were here this morning, and uh, it was so cool to be able to honor them. Excellent. So we're in the next part of our service, we're going to invite um, Toby and Ashley to come up, and uh, we're going to be graduating some sixth graders who are coming out of sixth grade and going to be joining our youth ministry. That is so cool. And they got, they got some young witnesses who are going to come in. Do you want me to invite them in now, Toby, or are you going to do it? So c- class, come on in. You can come find a seat up here on the floor. Now, Toby and Ashley, you guys can come up here if you want. You can, oh, you're going to help facilitate the sitting? That's, I know. I, I'm telling you what, we just, we just passed, uh, you know, f- like I said, there was like 14 graduates. A couple of those were college graduates, but that's a, that's a pretty big loss for a youth ministry, so it's all, it's all good. Good to see some of these youngins come up. Hey, son. <laughs> Randy, you're welcome at youth anytime, dude. <laughs> all right. Well, Ashley's making it happen. This is children's ministry at work. All right, come on up here. All right, so I'm going to turn this over to you. Okay. And, um, you know, you can, if you need anything, just let me know. Okay. First of all, I want to say it's just a huge blessing to do this. It's Amazing to see these four individual, individuals to grow in God. You know, some of the things that were on my heart when I was thinking about this is funny. Steve called me and said, hey, you know, we would like to do this as I'm pastor. And I'm like, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about the same thing, too. So it's just amazing. Our daughter's going to be going on as well as, you know, three other amazing people of God. And we know that God has great plans for them. You know, uh, <laughs> It's just amazing. Um, I know God has great plans for them, and I just know that God will do great things for them. I just know I pray for them. If you guys want to come up here. First off will be Paige Pickleman, Lana Cabrera, Joy Evans, and Mr. Hayes. Isaiah Hayes, thank you. They are going to be seventh graders next year, so they will be blessing, and youth will be a blessing to them to to continue to grow and just be the light. You guys continue to do all the great things that you have done so far. Um, Continue to go out there and show everyone around. You guys have amazing spirits, all four of you. You are great people. You um, will be missed in children's, but you are welcome back at any time to volunteer and to show and to continue to to be a witness to all the young ones. We are very proud of you, and we are honored to be part of your journey. Thank you for just being the people that you are. And thank you to the parents for just raising amazing young people. Thank you very much. I do. Go ahead, Mr. Mike. It's his first day. One thing I do want to add is that God knows the plans for you in the future, and he wants to make sure your path straight. 
So just remember that. No matter what goes on in your lives, always remember you have a God in heaven that will always take care of you and love you. No matter how long you think, no matter what path you went down that is wrong, there's always a God right behind you with arms wide open, ready to embrace you and love you. No matter how much you think you've done wrong, because you're going to be going into the world and you know that God loves you unconditionally, no matter what. We love you guys, and we look forward to seeing you grow. All right. Toby and Ashley are our children's ministry directors. They're having an awful hard time letting them go, aren't they? Yeah. In fact, did a great job of recruiting children's ministry right, right on the spot. Nicely done. Nicely done. We're proud of you. And you're now taking a step from one place to the next. And you know what? It's a big step to come out of children's ministry to youth ministry. And it can be intimidating. It might even feel a little bit scary. But I want you to know that Pastor Steve here is going to do everything he can to make that transition absolutely wonderful for you. All right? I want to pray over you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just call these blessed. Lord, all five of them as they move from children's ministry into youth ministry, that they'll know they're making the next step that you have for them, Lord. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give them a big hand.